trumpets of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. How the Grinch stole every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in the town. For every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. They're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake up bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then all oh, the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. The one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. And then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast and they'd feast and they'd feast and they'd feast. Feast, feast, feast. They would feast on hoop pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand in and hand in hand and the who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing. Sing, sing, sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming, but how? And then he got an idea, an awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and chuckled, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't, can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So we called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up. And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were die dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. Then he came to the first house on the square. This is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slivered and slurked, and a smile most unpleasant, around the whole town, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags, and the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out the ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now grinned the, grinned the Grinch. I'll stuff up that tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. He heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who out of her bed for a cup of cold water. 
He stared at the Grinch and said, she stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought up, thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fakey Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that, that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my wood shop, my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it up here. And his fib fooled the child, then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And then Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup. He went up the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he came up the chimney Leslie himself. Jordan, the beloved actor and the comedian, has On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some water. And one speck of food that, 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 that he left in the house was a crumb that was too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's house, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the Who's still abed, all the Who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up one side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the Who's, he said, Grinch humming they're finding out now that no Christmas is coming they're just waking up I know what they'll do their mouths will hang open a minute or two then the who's down in Hoover will cry boo hoo that's that noise grinned the Grinch that I simply must hear so he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear and he did hear a sound rising over the snow it started low and it started to grow but the sound wasn't sad why this sound sounded merry it couldn't be so but it was merry very very, he stared very down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes and he shook. What he saw was a uh, shocking was surprise. In, uh, in Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, the, the was singing without any presents uh, at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it John came just the same. Years, and the Grinch, with the Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came out with ribbons. It came out without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast